without a hint of irony or shame, Senate GOP leader Mitch McConnell declared an end to the era of bipartisanship, even as President Biden continues to entertain fruitless talks with Republicans. Oh, and also, a GOP congressman suggested the Forest Service should change the course of the Earth's orbit to fight climate change. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. One of the many things the Trump era has revealed about our political culture is that the Republican Party really has no core ideology aside from its deep hostility to democracy. They have no core policy positions or visions for the future, and that's why they don't spend much time talking about the things Joe Biden is actually doing. Instead, they whine about Dr. Seuss or Mr. Potato Head or go on Fox News and say dumb culture war BS like this from an actual United States senator just a few days ago. The leadership of the Democratic Party took a hard left and kept driving. There are two groups in charge. Uh, the wokeristas who have contempt for America and the managerial elite who have contempt for the American middle class. I refer to them as the... Um, the vanilla soy extra foam latte crowd. Hey, Huckleberry Hound, you know who's buying all the vanilla soy lattes. It's the middle class. I mean, don't you have Instagram? Every third picture is a smiling soccer parent with a seatbelt over the shoulder, holding up a Starbucks cup with the caption, live, laugh, caffeinate. Also, a latte with extra foam is just a cappuccino. You don't have to be a coastal elite to know that. Just go to Starbucks, order a latte with extra foam, and wait for an exasperated barista to say, so, a cappuccino? And let's forget, this dude used to be a Democrat who endorsed John Kerry in 2004 and went to Oxford. So I don't quite buy it when he puts on his fake folksy demeanor and talks like he's on Baton Rouge basic cable giving out crawdad recipes. Ooh, eat they extra tasty if you leave the guts in them. <laughs> I'm willing to bet that accent is even real. When he's on TV, he's all like, Democrats are crazier than a swamp rat snorting bath salts in a steamboat. But then as soon as the cameras are off, he turns to an aide and says, right, that's another advert for the telly, done and dusted. Now switch on Tottenham versus Man U. <laughs> the point is, this is all Republicans have, this culture war nonsense. Like when they said Joe Biden wants to ban hamburgers as part of the Green New Deal. Republicans want you to think the Green New Deal is some sort of socialist plot to destroy America. Meanwhile, a GOP congressman suggested during a hearing this week that a better way to fight climate change would be for the Forest Service and Bureau of Land Management to somehow alter the orbit of the Earth and the Moon. I understand from what's been testified to the Forest Service and the BLM, you want very much to uh, work on the issue of climate change. I was... Uh, uh, informed by the immediate past director of NASA that they have found that the moon's orbit is changing slightly, and so is the Earth's orbit around the sun. Uh, we know there's been a significant solar flare activity. Um, and so is there anything that the National Forest Service or BLM can do to uh, change the course of the moon's orbit or the Earth's orbit around the sun, obviously that would have profound effects on our climate. I would have to follow up with you on that one, Mr. Gomert. Just to be clear, that was Congress. <laughs> what you just saw was from like the actual Congress. It wasn't a 3 a.m. public access show that's supposed to be about current events, but the only people who call in want to talk about UFOs. All right, tonight's topic is infrastructure. Steve, you're on the line. Yeah, I'm curious. Do you think extraterrestrials can drive? And if so, do you think that explains the traffic on the Verrazano? I'll hang up and listen. Now, there's been some suggestion that Gomer was being sarcastic as a way to dismiss efforts to fight climate change, which would be just as dumb. Either way, these people would rather change Earth's actual orbit than maybe put up some windmills or drive an electric car. They literally, literally think the world should revolve around them. I also love the long pause in the promise to follow up, which she definitely will not. Nor does she have to. I'm pretty sure Gomert has the memory of a golden retriever. Not like he's going to roll into work on Monday and yell, Did the tree lady call back with the moon answer? <laughs> I'm having a lousy day already. <laughs> Barista gave me <laughs> for asking for a latte with extra foam. Her response was the equivalent of giving someone at a bar a fake numbers so they'll leave you alone. Yeah, Bo, I'd love to go out with you. Just give me a call at 1-877-KARS-4-KIDS. I was really hoping to play the 
Cars for Kids jingle there, but I was told that, much like You Can't Touch This by MC Hammer, we can't afford it, which is why we've been trying to cut down on the number of lines we give Wally. Because every time he speaks, we have to pay him per word. But Shut it, Wally! <laughs> every word you say is one less word we could afford from this genius. And last time I checked, Wally, it's hammer time, not yammer time! There are really times when you miss the audience. <laughs> What's that? It would have been the same? Also, the best part about that clip is there was no way, no way you could have predicted where it was going from where it started. It's like getting cornered at a cocktail party by a guy who wants to talk to you about life insurance, and you think, all right, this is boring, so you zone out for 30 seconds, and suddenly you hear the phrase zombie flesh-eating space cicadas, which, side note, oh, and can a tangent have a side note? Can you check with legal on that and get back to me? Anyway, side note, as soon as Broadway reopens, do buy your tickets for my new musical, Cicada Cicada, starring Christine Baranski, Harvey Firestein, and Nathan Lane. And we are also thrilled to announce that Jason Sudeikis is joining the cast as Jason Cicadas. <laughs> fresh off his monster success starring in Ted Grasso. That's not a response. To the, that's the theme song. Between Cicada Cicada and My Zipper, plus my new show, Chicago Postal Service Police Force, I will have enough money to afford an entire line from You Can't Touch This. Seth. Wally! MC stands for Master of Ceremonies, not Master of Cue Cards. That's why there's only the one C. Every word you say is one less lyric we can afford from this genius. Anyway, where was I? Oh, politics? All right. So that's the Republican Party we're dealing with, and Democrats need to be clear-eyed about that fact. It's a party whose members believe the Forest Service has the power to alter the Earth's orbit, that wildfires are caused by secret Jewish space lasers, and that the election was hacked by Italian satellites. What's their obsession with space? Did they all watch... The first episode of Loki last night and think it was a documentary. Side note, and did legal get back to us so we can, can't take a side note? Let's just do it anyway. Side note, I'm really hoping that Loki's not a big hit. Not because I didn't enjoy it, which I did, but because I'm really hoping Owen Wilson's not too tied up for the Wedding Crashers sequel that we here at Late Night are claiming full credit for. I mean, if by some chance Loki takes Wilson away from the project, then, you know, Vince is going to have to make a phone call. And, well, I don't know. I think it... Might sound something like this. Buddy, 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 you know, I love Loki. You know, he's an imp, he's a trickster, his antics are adorable, but we have to make this movie. The world is waiting for us. I don't know, man, I think Marvel might be a little more popular. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? Oh, right. Republicans are too concerned about culture stuff. Oh. This is why it's absurd to contemplate bipartisan cooperation with the Republican Party, and yet for some reason Joe Biden and certain members of the Democratic Party, like Joe Manchin, still seem obsessed with it. This week, for example, Biden ended bipartisan negotiations with one group of Republicans, only to start negotiations with another group of Republicans. Tonight, infrastructure negotiations entering a new phase. With President Biden ending talks with a group of Republicans led by Senator Shelley Moore Capito on Tuesday and reaching out to members of a bipartisan group of moderate senators. I'm sorry, which group of Republicans do you think you're going to find common ground with? The group that thinks the Forest Service has the power to alter Earth's orbit or the group that thinks the election was hacked by Italian satellites. All right, folks, how about a compromise? How about instead of the Forest Service, we use the Italian satellites to alter the Earth's orbit? Do we have a deal? Also, there's a downside to humoring Republicans, and that's time. Every day wasted on bipartisan talks that will inevitably go nowhere is a day that could have been spent working on or passing much-needed legislation on everything from climate change to voting rights. That's Mitch McConnell's goal to run out the clock. Didn't we learn that lesson from the Obama era? He spent months making good faith efforts to woo Republicans. He went to a House GOP conference to take questions and hosted a summit with them. In the end, all he got out of it was zero votes from Senate Republicans for his health care bill and an annoying pompous lecture from Paul Ryan. This bill does not reduce deficits. Instead, this bill adds a new health care entitlement at a time when we have no idea how to pay for the entitlements we already have. First, a little bit about CBO. I work with them every single day. Very good people, great professionals. They do their jobs well. But their job is to score what is placed in front of them. And what has been placed in front of them is a bill that is full of gimmicks and smoke and mirrors. Now, what do I mean when I say that? Yeah, look at Obama's face. That's the moment right then when he started thinking about his Netflix deal. 
Maybe I can get a part in Loki. Uh, Loki, stop with your antics. It's time to get uh, serious. Oh, sir, that's uh, Disney Plus. But he's Loki. Can you trick him into moving to Netflix? So you guys, two Loki references in one look. It was pretty good. I wonder if there's going to be a third one. Shoemaker, do you think we'll do rule of threes on Loki? You're useless. Our material is getting fresher. Next, we're going to be talking about cryptocurrencies and Dogecoin, or as Sean Hannity called it last night. OK, you've been hearing all about it. Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. What is it? Why is it so big? What is Bitcoin? What is blockchain? What is doggy coin? Well, apparently you haven't been hearing all about it. Doggy coin is what my kids call it when Frisbee leaves, <laughs> leaves a turd on the carpet. <laughs> anyway, what we're we talking about? All right, the news. Senate Republicans couldn't even produce 10 measly votes for a commission to investigate the January 6th insurrection. And this week, they blocked the Paycheck Fairness Act. They're never going to agree to a deal on, say, infrastructure, especially when their members, like Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn, are going on Fox News and saying stuff like this. If they want great infrastructure right now ready to build, go build the wall on the southern border. A wall in the middle of the desert is not infrastructure. No one can use it, drive over it, or through it, unless you paint a tunnel on it. And even then, it's only applicable to roadrunners. Also, I thought Trump already built the wall. He kept insisting the wall was being built. So which is it? Did he build it or did he flake on a court campaign promise? Or are you guys calling for more walls? We need a second wall to protect the first wall because it is flimsy and shoddily made. And the best part is we don't have to pay for it. We can just use doggy coin. The meaningless pursuit of bipartisanship that will never happen is wasting valuable time and energy that could go to far more productive things. In fact, McConnell has already declared that his number one goal is blocking the Biden agenda. And earlier this week, without even a hint of self-awareness, he said this. As you look to uh, what the majority leader has in mind for June, it's pretty clear the era of bipartisanship is over. Oh, man, I wonder whose fault that is. If this had been the case Mayor of Easttown was investigating, she would have solved it in the first five minutes and spent the next six episodes trying to figure out why all the kids in town looked like they came from L.A. I don't know, Mayor. Their teeth are real good. Republicans have no interest in making government work, only in controlling it. That's why they're laser-focused on subverting democracy, spreading the big lie that the 2020 election was stolen, posing for photos at the Minnesota violent insurrection to overturn the results, and passing voter suppression laws so they can never lose again. They think they're beyond democratic accountability, no matter how unpopular they are. Basically, when it comes to voters, their attitude, much like MC Hammer is... <laughs> this is on you, Wally. I'm sorry, Seth. I try to stop, but I just can't. Why? Because I'm too legit to quit. <laughs> good one. Yeah. <laughs> I felt pretty good about it. <laughs> anyway, what was I doing? All right, I was trying to end this segment. Basically, when it comes to bipartisanship, even basic democracy, the Republican position is... Why never do it again? This has been A Closer Loki. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over 2 million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated. We love you.